Why do you think <clears throat> someone like Ta-Nehisi Coates says using the argument of culture is lazy? <clears throat> um, again, it's it's ironically he is he's his argument for that uh, is so so bare bones that it, his argument for that is so lazy that I don't even know how to combat it. You know, is I I don't see anything lazy about it. I think. I think he he probably just views it, it as a as a cop out, but I I've never seen him seriously grapple with. I mean I've seen him try to explain away the single parent home problem in a way that that was really not dealing with with the statistics there. But um, no, I mean it's it's I don't know what to say other than it's not lazy. It's yeah. I mean culture. I mean uh, so so. Harvard sociologist Orlando Patterson and uh, another Harvard sociologist, uh, William Ju Julius Wilson, both black, have written quite a bit about race. And they're, they're one, some of the only sociologists that have taken very seriously the hypothesis that culture in itself is a factor that can explain other things rather than uh, an epiphenomenon, just a mere consequence of other things that can't itself be a primary cause of outcomes. So they, they, there are two people that have taken it seriously. Patterson, I think it's fair to say, believes that culture is a, a primary causal phenomenon. J uh, William Julius Wilson emphasizes culture less. But they've both said that there's this massive taboo among academics, among sociologists, about e even entertaining the hypothesis that culture is the cause of something. I think one of them called it the C word somewhere, ironically, or sarcastically. Oh, jeez. Um, and it was a, like, a sociologist, you're a sociologist. If you're not gonna study culture, who is? Right, I mean, you would think, it, it's a paradox yeah, right. that sociologists, for the most part, aren't willing to entertain the hypothesis but that the culture of societies or social groups, which they study, has consequences. Yeah, you're right. That that's literally in the name of their yeah. job it, description. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so there's there is I mean pe people like John Haidt and and Greg Lukianoff who've written a lot about um, the problem of ideological siloing on on in research in colleges. I'm sorry, ideological. S yeah, the ideal the orthodoxy. Let's say ideological mm -hmm. orthodoxy. The fact that so many professors lean left and there's mm -hmm. so few professors that lean right. I think there's there's some statistic like in the top 60 elite colleges, there are like 44 so left-leaning sociologists for every one wow. right-leaning sociologist. So you can imagine that the literature just from the beginning is skewed, right? <clears throat> the way I know this is because in my piece, Black American Culture and the Racial Wealth Gap, I, I pointed out statistics that are publicly available, easily f searchable mm -hmm. on Google, namely that uh, the average black woman is more likely to have a luxury vehicle. Um, this has, I've never seen a sociologist who, who talks about the wealth gap mention this. It would be, you, would think, you would think this would be widely known yeah. or at least widely talked about, but Someone like me who just has, you know, a college student with an internet connection who, who reads, I, I come out with it and pe people, you know, r people are tre treating me as if, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I've discovered this thing. In a way I did, but I really didn't. I mean, the, the, the thing is people were just not willing in academia to look for these kinds of facts or once they're found to talk about them. So there's just this enormous gap in the literature. Um, and so few people within academia, academia willing to talk about it. Um, so yes, I guess, what, what was the question? <laughs> I think I was originally asking you about uh, Tony Husey Coates saying that yeah. using culture is, <clears throat> is lazy and- um, Yeah, I mean, but yeah, part of the problem is just that um, academia, uh, academics are not, academia is broken in terms of 
uh, the range of hypotheses that are allowed to be entertained. So if you're a curious person who is wading in to the problem of racial disparities, and you just look for what the mainstream takes among respected academics are, you'll, you might find or Orlando Patterson, who has entertained the hypothesis of black culture, but you'll also find 60 other sociologists who treat the phrase black culture like it's a swear word. So you're gonna, you're gonna assume naively that it's more or less the feel, it's more or less the consensus of experts that culture has mm -hmm. nothing to do with it. Um, well, why do you think that is? I, this is kind of going off topic. I know this is kind of going into uh, academia and what you call the ideological... Orthodoxy. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The, the, with, with the ratio so high, 44 to 1, sociologists leaning left. Mm -hmm. um, why, why is that? And, and I mean, are, are people making, voicing concern about that? Um, jo Jonathan Haidt and Greg Lukianoff uh, who just wrote a book called The Coddling of the American Mind, which is excellent and I highly recommend. Yeah, they're, they're bringing attention to this issue because they're concerned that research suffers when there's only a narrow range of opinions you're allowed to have, which yeah. is obviously yeah. true. We need people to be fighting it out with evidence and that's how consensus emerges, not just one, one half of, of the political spectrum voicing its academic opinions. Um, I don't know, it's a complex story. I've heard, I've heard smart people say that in the 60s and 70s, conservative intellectuals kind of uh, retreated to think tanks because academia was increasingly hostile to them. And that that's just compounded. Christina, I think Christina Hoff Summers kind of mentioned something similar for feminism in yeah. academia at yeah. that time. Yeah, I think a similar dynamic for, for race issues. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know the full story mm -hmm. historically of how 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 it came to be the case that elite universities are so so hostile to conservative ideas. Um, do you think it has something to do with what you were mentioning earlier about kind of institutional guilt? Yeah, it could, that could be true. Yeah, there could be a link there. Yeah, it could it could be that institutions came came under the presumption of racism so fully that. It, it just became harder and harder just to... swung the yeah. other side. Yeah. Do they... Isn't there something out there with a German guilt? I, I have no idea what the details are, but I've heard that there's I've heard been... That, yeah. Or actually, I think I heard that in relation to the immigrant situation that's happening in Germany and Europe yeah. right now, was uh, <clears throat> saying that Germany in particular, one of the reasons why they're so open is because of this guilt of yeah. the past. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe. And two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.